welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today we're going to be taking a look at randomization. More specifically, randomization or random drawing with replacement or without replacement. And we're also going to take a look at how set seed or randomization actually works in starter. So bear with me for a while because this is uh, not going to be the shortest one I've made so far. So well, let's just get started. As you can see, I've already set my directory. So I know where everything will be saved should I use that. It's just nice housekeeping. And I'm going to use the automobile data set that is in starter. So you can also just replicate it, well, with your own data set if you want to. So in this particular data set, we have a total of 74 cars. You can just use the count command to really check that one out. So what we're going to start with here today is simply the sampling without replacement. So we can only draw one car once, essentially. The command for that in starter is straightforward, it's just called sample. And we can put in a number afterward, afterwards here that represents the number or the percentage we want to sample from this, well, sample or this, well, data set. So we want to sample 20%. You can see that starter actually deletes the observations that was not selected. And we can see it deleted 59 observations. We can just use the count command again to really check how many is left. We see there's 15 left. So 74, we want to sample 20%. That is 7.4 is 10, so we times it by 2, that's, well, round up 15. So that fits very nicely. We of course, just take a look at what is left in the sample here after we randomly selected 15 of them, which was represented by, well, the 20%. That's one thing. But suppose now we actually just want to draw 20 exact. You could, of course, fiddle around a percentage and just trial and error, but you can also just simply tell Starter, I just want to sample 20 and that's it. So we're going to use the automobile set again. So we're just going to clear our data set, start over. We can, of course, count again just to check whether is this actually true, but we already know there's 74, uh, 74 cars in there. And sampling 20 this time, but the point is we want to make it just to 20 cars and that's 20%. And there you just have to use the option count. Do not mistake this with the count command. This is just an option you put into sample. So now when we sample, you see only 54 was deleted. Hmm. So that means when I open here, there should be only, well, 20 cars left, which is indeed the case here. Starting with the old Starfire, ending with the Mercedes Sapphire here. So good pronunciation. I know. Fantastic. So we can lower it here again, and then we can simply go on to the next thing. Because now support, suppose we sample now from the entire data set. That's one thing. But we can also, of course, sample using some criteria or sample from subsections or according to some division. In this data set, you have a dummy that takes on the value one if the car is a foreign car and the value zero if it's domestic. Domestic in this case being a US car. So of course we can just load in the data set, data set once more. Let's put the same uh, sys use there, auto, well, not sys dear. And now I just want to have the same distance because, well, I want the same thing. So we see here, sys auto clear. We load the data set once more. And now we're going to sort it by the foreign. So that's the variable here that is foreign for foreign cars. And so one for foreign and zero for domestic. We have now sorted the data set. And now we want to sample according to this. But to really see what's happening here, we can, of course, also buy this foreign here, simply count and see how many are each data set here on each division. So See here, by foreign, colon count, gives me that is 52 domestic cars and 22 foreign cars in our current data set. And now we can simply go on and sample. So we do by foreign, we want to sample 20% from each of these. Well, so we want to sample 20% from the 52 and 20% from the 22. We see there's 60 cars deleted or 60 observations. So let's just count again and see how many are left. We see there's 10 domestic cars and four foreign. Does that make sense? Let's go quick and check. 5.2 is 10%, so that's 10.4, rounded down to 10, makes sense. 12.2 is 10, that is 4.4, round down, that is four, makes perfect sense. So now we indeed have sampled using this criteria foreign. Now, one thing here, you can see that we sample from both things, but suppose we only want to sample, say, from our foreign cars. So let's do this again. We have the whole thing again, so we know how many is there. Now we want to just sample only if the car is foreign. So we sample 20% if foreign is equal to one. 
So here we make sure we only sampled from the foreign cars. How we can do that again is simply just check the count one more time. So we see now, well, yeah, of course I have to sort it. That's one thing that's very important. Always, always sort before you use a buy or buy sort command. So we see here, there's still 52 domestic cars. That's great. And now there's only four cars in the foreign. Well, that's exactly what we wanted because that corresponds to the 20%. There you go. And of course you can just change the criteria. You can do it for non-foreign cars. You can also do for a certain price range, trunk range, miles per gallon, whatever's in there. You can sample according to, well, whatever you like actually. So this here rounds off sampling without replacement. And now let's go in and sample with replacement. So again, we need the data set clear again. So now we have the data set all open again with the 74 observations. But before we sample with replacement, I would like to do a few things first. First, we want to generate an ID variable so we can keep good track of the data. So we generate ID equal to underscore N. Underscore N, if you don't remember, generates a variable that starts from one and just counts up until a number of observations. In this case, that will be 74. We can just go take a look. So we have the data set here. We look at the end, we see the variable ID starts at one, goes all the way to 74. This makes it a lot easier to see if we sample the same car more than once. Now we're gonna sample with replacement. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the command bsample. That is the sampling with replacement. And unlike the sample command, the default here is sampling by number, so by count. So we don't have to use an option count to get the number if we want say 20, we just have to write 20. It will randomly sample 20 cars and that is it. So let's go and try that. Random sample 20. We have 20 cars left we see. Did we sample any of the same car twice? Let's see if we can quickly find some. Well, look, 43 was sampled twice. Indeed, just showing that this is indeed with replacement. It's like you sample from a bag of candy, but you put the candy back. I know, very realistic. You'll sample that without replacement if that was me. But this is just to show what is actually happening here. But suppose now you want to be able to make the same random sample every time. That may sound a little counterintuitive to go and ruin randomness that way, but you want to be able to replicate exactly the same draw you made to replicate a study so you can do exactly the same every time when you want to show your boss, your supervisor, your colleague, who else wants to see your code, right? Somebody wants to see your code. Don't forget that. What we do here is using the so-called set C command, because you have to imagine Stata doesn't use true randomness in that sense. It uses pseudo randomness. That is, it actually draws, when it's asked to do something random, it draws from a large set of different random draws. And we can, of course, using the set seat command, we can tell to use the same random draw every time. So actually, we just have to give it a number. It could be any number, one up until how many set seats there are. Tom, I actually don't know how many there are, but there's a lot. I just like to use 42 because we know that's the answer to everything. So I set C this 42. And now to really show what is going on here, let's generate this ID and sample 20 again. Let's run this. Let's pull up the data. Let's put it here at the end. There we go. Let's go and take a look at it here. And now I'm going to run the code one more time. Notice at the end it's 121, just so we can see if we sample the same thing. Run it again, scooch down here, and we see one, two, one. I could run this as many times as I want because this will be the same random draw every single time. So that is how it works with replacement. And this here can actually be generalized to something much more useful because suppose now you want to assign different observations to groups. Because remember when I sampled here using sample and B sample, it deleted all the observations. So now suppose we have a big sample you want to randomize them into a given groups, say for starters, two groups, we can use this set C to be able to generate the same composition every single time. So once more, let's load in the data. And now we want to assign them using the same random draw every time. And we want to generate a random variable that assigns them. And this we can do by simply just generating a random number we can just call it random because I have no creativity. We want to use the uniform distribution. So Stata has these nice distributions loaded in there. So you can draw from the uniform distribution. If you just put a parenthesis like that, it means you draw from the standard 0, 1 interval, exactly the same probability of each draw. That's because it's uniform, right? 
So now we have generated each of these 74 cars will get a random number between zero and one. So you know, a lot of decimals. And this will be the same random number every single time because we set the seed. Using this number, we can now divide them into two groups based on this random number. How do we do that? We use egen, generate a variable we call ordering, and we wanna rank all these random numbers that we generated. So using the rank, rank function. This here will generate a rank. Let's go and take a look at it. So we go over here. We see here, here's the random number that I gave to every single car in the sample. And here's the ranking, one being the smallest number given and 74 being the highest number given. And yeah, this may be a little confusing to most, but just to, if you're not sure how gen and egen works, go back and check a video I made on it. That will hopefully help you quite a bit. So let's minimize this for now and let's actually do the division. So we're gonna generate a group variable. We're just gonna put it at missing first and then we're gonna assign groups, say zero and one. So we're gonna replace group equal to one if, and now comes the important part. If the ordering variable is smaller than or equal to underscore capital N divided by two. Underscore capital N simply just means the number of observations in the data set. So that would actually represent 74. So this one here tells you, you put them in group, actually zero, if it's below this, and now I'll put them in group one, if it is above this, well, below and equal to, of course. So like this here, we have now generated two groups, and we can, of course, chaply just to take a look at how the division is. 37 in each group, perfectly split even 50-50. Of course, some of you out there may want to split into multiple groups, three, four, 50, 100, 2000, who knows? You want to generalize this. And that's where we can actually make this a lot more general, so this will hopefully be very useful to you. Doing this, I'm gonna generate yet another group variable because I'm out of creativity, I just call it group two. And I'm gonna start by just putting in the first group. So now we're gonna say three groups, but you can always just increase this to any number of groups you want just by altering the code I'll give you now. So first, we just put them in group zero, and then we put them in one and two afterwards. So we wanna replace our group two variable with zero if the ordering is below divided by three, because now we are segmenting our data set into three groups. That's why we have to divide it by three. So you just change this number according to how many groups you want to make in your data set. Now we're gonna use a loop. And this is to be able to, you can generalize it at home to make it a lot easier for yourself. You can probably also just loop it all the way in one go, but I like to have an initial, well, command first, just to make it easier for me at least. Hopefully it helps for you too. So I'm gonna use the four values. We're gonna put a counter i that starts at one, increases by one, goes to two. Of course, you can increase this to any number that you want to do because we missed two groups, group one and two, so we want to do this twice. We are going to put inside our loop here, we're going to say replace group two equal to, and now we use the counter i. I'm going to explain this in a lot more detail in just a moment. If the ordering is less than or equal to counter i plus one, Yes, I know, this looks a little uh, little fishy, but let me explain this in just a second. So we're gonna say divided by three and the ordering, ordering being larger than, and then we put the counter i in once more, multiplied by, and then this big underscore n divided by three. What is happening here? Let me explain. So the first time this loop goes, the i is equal to one. So we say we replace group two equal to one. So we put them in group one if, the ordering is less than or equal to, so this will be two because one plus one, two times this, so the second level, you could call it, and at the same time, it's larger than one times this. So you wanna make sure that it's larger than the ordering you had before, but lower than the next step. Because the second time this runs through, the count will be equal to two. This will be three, so that will be the full number of the sample, so it'll be less than seven, has to be less than or equal to 74, and higher than than two times this that we had before. So let's just try and run this entire code again. One more time, we divide all the groups, and now we can tabulate our new group two variable to see how the division was made. And we see 
well, we cannot have an even split because it's got 74 cars, but as good as, right? 24, 25, 25. And now you can just take this code and alter it to how many groups you want. So this here should round off what we have today. So we looked at sampling without replacement, sampling with replacement. We looked at this set seed and this how this randomization works. And we looked at how you can generalize how to store, well, observations in given groups. And I really hope that this helped you. And I hope to see you back for another class here in Stefan's classroom. Have a great day and until next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.